Hello everybody, welcome back to Rain and Paws. I'm Mitch and today I'm going to be attempting a rather large uh, beach style or sunset style swipe on a round canvas. Uh, it seems to be all the rage in the Shelley art group these, these days and Shelley's been pumping out some amazing swipes. So I'm going to give them a go myself. Now I tried one of these a couple of days ago, turned out absolutely terrible. So I'm going to try and redeem myself this time. So let's go down onto the canvas and we'll get started. So here I have a 16 inch round canvas, I believe. Uh, yes, 16 inch round. And I've just taped up the back like I normally do. A uh, bit of uh, scotch tape, I use the paint block technology one. It's really good at keeping the paint and the resin out from underneath on the back of the canvas and keeping everything nice and clean. Now, I have 16 colors mixed up and two cell activators. I've got four background colors. So, my idea is to layer my background colors with white on the top so that my sunset doesn't get um, obscured by the blue. And we're gonna start with that. So, doesn't really matter where I layer this. I'm just gonna put that there. And I can always add a little bit more paint if I feel like that's running low. Then I'm going to start with this blue, which is by British Paints, and I had this tinted at the store. It's just a sample pot. Uh, this is called Glazed Blue, I believe. So I'm just going to pour some out, and I've had these colour pots for ages, literally months, as I bought them when I started doing blooms, thinking I was going to use them a lot more for my pores, and I've sort of just forgotten about them. So this is a great way to use them up. Then I've got this one, which is called, no name, I don't have a name, is it on the lid? It's on the lid. This one is called Blue Passion. Again, another British paint sample pot. And I've just given these a really good mix because I said they have been sitting here for quite a long time. Now they are slightly different consistencies to each other. So this is going to be interesting. And then I have Ocean Charm, which is a nice dark, deep blue. So the way I want to layer these is my darkest colors at the bottom here to take advantage of that deep blue and my reds and oranges at the top. That looks really, really thick. Maybe a mistake, but let's see what happens. Hey, right. now I've got a fair few bubbles in here. I've just mixed these up, so I am going to torch really lightly. Just to pop a few of those. With house paint, you want to be really careful that you don't get too close or torch too much because you can form a skin and that will mean that your paint uh, will not react properly. I've also got a nice clean skewer. I've ditched the old one. It's way too messy. And I'm just going to pop some of these bubbles that I can see. Now, keeping in mind that you do have to work quickly with house paint because ours here in Australia tend to set really quickly and I don't want bubbles in my paint. So first color I'm going to put down is phthalo blue. And I believe that these are mostly Matisse paints. If they're not, I'll try and remember which one I'm using. And I'm going to thin these as I go. So I'm trying to multitask, making sure all my paints are the same consistency. Okay, so phthalo blue down here. And this is a big canvas, so I will put down quite a bit of paint. And my goal today is to try and use up some of the paints that I've got mixed up, some of my um, tube paint colors. We've got new, this little piggy pigments coming, so I need to make room for those. Then I have a custom turquoise color that I've mixed up, and I believe this is Pebio Iridescent Blue Green mixed with this little piggy lakeside and Matisse Australian uh, Southern Ocean Blue, sorry. You can see lots of bubbles in my paints. Okay. Then I have, this is a custom blue mixed up. I don't know what's in here. I think there's a little bit of this little piggy frost uh, there's some Matisse Cobalt Teal. There could also be some this little piggy blue eyes. Literally all of these paints I've had mixed up sitting here for months not being used. So I thought why not try and combine them all into a big pour. 
There we go. And after each color I'm putting down, I'm wiping off my stick and I'm just using the same stick to stir all my colors through. Then I'm going to apply some Matisse Dioxazine Purple. This one's really thick. Okay. Then I have, next I wanted to put this little piggy Aspen. So I don't use Aspen a whole lot and there was a discussion in the little piggy group today which was really helpful and really insightful about what people's favorite colors are and what their least favorite little piggy colors are and aspen and tail feather came up as two of the popular ones and the most common reason was people are unsure of how to use them in their paws because they are such unique colors and i find aspen really goes well with a blue green color scheme uh, it's got a really amazing gold color shift over it and it can add a really nice subtle color shift over the top. So I like to use it in conjunction with other colors, not necessarily by itself. And this will add a bit to the oceany vibe of this because the ocean's not really blue, it's that really deep green. So then let's add on top of that, I want to do macaw. And macaw is a beautiful blue to gold color shift, indigo to gold, I should say. And I'm going to spread that all over the top and I'm going to do a thick layer of that up here because I really want that to show through. I used a fair bit of macaw there. <laughs> Nearly all of my sample packet gone. Okay, then I'm going to use a sunburnt yellow, which is a color that I have mixed up. And I believe it's Matisse Cadmium Yellow with a couple of drops of Red Earth Acrylic Ink from Liquitex, I think it is. Or it could be FW. FW Ink, this one. And that ink is uh, like a brown color and it just deepens this yellow nicely. Here. Now, the problem that I see with a lot of uh, sunset style pores is there's a lot of ocean and not necessarily a lot of the sunset. So my goal is to try and fix that and do a pour that's got a fair bit of sunset as well as the ocean. Then I have this little piggy submarine. This is another new color. Amazing shimmery sparkly sunflower yellow. And a fair bit of that, a little bit down here. Now, when thinking about a sunset, I'm thinking about how the natural gradient of a sunset goes. And the reason I stopped putting pink here is because you don't see pink at the bottom of a sunset, you see it at the top. So the next color I'm going to put down is sunburnt orange. I created this in the same way that I did the uh, sunburnt yellow, or deep yellow, I should say, it's not sunburnt. And it is uh, Matisse Cadmium Orange mixed with some of that red earth acrylic ink. Bring that down and I don't want too much orange because the yellow and the red will mix to make orange as well. And you can tell I'm using a combination of paints and pigments and I'm trying to layer them two paints, two piggies, two pa uh, one paint, two piggies, one paint, two piggies. That's just to give them the best chance of holding up and not sinking or flocculating underneath. So the red, I just want to mix it in a little bit. And for the top of the sunset, another paper towel so I can wipe my stick. And for the top of the sunset, I'm going to use this little piggy Venus. This is another new one. So Venus is a really nice uh, pinky purple almost. Really beautiful color. But the next couple are my favorites. So Venus, then I have this little piggy Groovy. And because this is a bright neon pink, I don't want too much because it will be noticeable. It will stand out. Uh, 
And then, I just received this in the mail, literally five minutes ago. Well, five minutes before starting this video. I mixed some up and said I had to use it. This is this little piggy watermelon. And this is an amazing, literally watermelon pink color. So I'm gonna use a fair bit of that and I'm gonna drizzle that down. Just a little bit. Okay, now to finish off, that's all of my colors applied. To finish this off, I'm going to add a little bit more macaw on top. For that interference color shift. There we go. Okay, and that is ready. Now, my swipe tool, I'm using the Liquitex number 15, I believe. It's the nice big one. Um, but I got this from the art studio. It's the exact same knife, just not Liquitex branded. And what I'm going to do here is go around the side of my pillow paint and just rough it up a little bit. And I'm going to do the white first so I don't mess it up. And I'm doing this because our pillow paints do dry so quickly here. If I don't do this, I'll be able to see a visible line around the edge of my painting uh, when I go to blow it out. So not too fussed about these mixing because we want them to mix. That's a good thing. And here we go. So I will torch the top again because there are a lot of bubbles. Just giving it a really quick once over. Done. And go in with my skewer again and just pop some of these bigger ones. Okay, so here I charred the surface a little bit. And you can see there's lots of little measles popping up. Now one way to solve that as well is to drop your canvas. And that will sort of bring some of the bubbles to the surface. Sorry everyone wobbling around on the on the camera. Now I'm going to put on my titanium white cell activator first today. Normally I do it the other way around. But I'm going to follow in Shelly's footsteps, do it her way, and put the white on first and see if I like the result. Just tapping off some of the excess. I think part of my problem with swipes is I use too much cell activator and I end up with muddy colors. So I'm just really laying it on lightly here. The paint's gray underneath. And again, just gonna get it all spread around and tap off the excess. Okay, now I'm going to smush like this and around. I'm not going to do more than one. And I don't know why I keep bringing up this. This does, I don't like that. This is the problem I have when I swipe. <laughs> okay. So what I might do is grab my smaller swipey tool and I'll grab this one and I'm just going to go in with the same white and Payne's grey. And I'm going to swipe in the centre here. That's cool. Okay, I didn't stuff that up. Yay. <laughs> That's exciting. Normally I completely screw that up and I ruin everything. Okay, so now let's try and get this spun out.
So looking at it on my computer screen, that's definitely something that I love. So let's zoom in with our detail camera and get some detailed shots. Here we go. So what I've done there is I've just wiped down my spinner. So here I have lumps of dried paint and that's catching my spatula when I try and scrape it. So what I do once it gets to a point where it's too lumpy and bumpy, I'll take it outside once the paint's all dry and I'll just give it a sand with my random orbital sander. And that pretty much uh, on 100 grit or 160 grit pretty much takes all of the uh, bumps off there. So there we go, that was sunset pour number one. Stay tuned and I'll do another one. I'll be filming that right after this. So if you like what I'm doing, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.